They are very wise people on earth. You mention an idea, they will pick it very fast. Run with it and become wealthy. You remain in your poverty and in your troubles because you are a dreamer, but you never take action. Dream and take actions. I say again, dream and take what? Actions. But so many people, oh, pastor, I have, a, a, I have this vision. I have all these that I have planned. One day, I plan to buy land, subdivide it into plots, and then sell. If I were you, go open a limited company where even though you don't have the money right now to buy the one acre, stay with your company. Opportunity will come, and you'll get the money. You can present your idea to a bank. You can present your idea to somebody who has idle money and they feel they can buy your idea and become your partner. What I'm trying to say is that I pray for you and you who is here. May you be quick in taking actions. Stop wasting years and years and years. You know? Oh, you know, I like Mr. Perfect. You know, the man you are talking about is five men in one. You can't get such a man. Unless five men are put in one man, that is when your list will be fulfilled. You know, I want a man tall and dark, number one. Not many are tall and dark. There are some who are short. Number two, I want a man with abs. Okay? I want a man who is financially secure. Mm. With this corona, okay? Number three, I want a man at least who has land. You know, I, I know all those lists, young girls write. I want a man who has traveled. Okay, number seven. Oh, I want a man, you know, a man who is not a mama's boy. Number eight. Okay, keep on adding that list. Those are ten men in one. And getting such a man is very difficult. You'll get tall and dark. Work with him. Work with that tall and dark to become the other eight things that you need. The abs, he, you can take him to the gym. You know, uh, the mama's boy, you know there is a problem with women and I want, to clear, I want to make this clear. A woman may be calling her mother every day, which is true, Mr. James. Women talk with their mothers every day. Okay? But if a man talks with his mother once or twice per week, he's a mama's boy. I don't know what is the problem. No, I'm asking. When your mom is alive, women call their mothers even two or three times a day. Right? Go check your wife if you're married. Look at her call log. The first thing in the morning is the mother. Lunchtime, mother. Evening, mother. Do we call that woman um, uh, a mama's Girl, you as a man call your mother twice a week. He is a mother's boy. He can't do anything without consulting his mother. My mom is growing old. I check on her. Is there anything wrong even checking on her every day? What is wrong about that? Hello, mom. How are you? You're doing well? Thank you, my son. I'm fine. I just have pain here and here, but I'm doing well. You know? That is okay. But when you call your mother, they, they brand you a mother's boy. Mama's boy. But I don't know why they don't brand. So ladies, listen to, the, to me clear, clearly. If you don't want your husband to call his mother, stop calling your mother. Yeah, call her once per month. Yeah, call her once per... They keep on taking... You, you, leave, you, you leave them on the table room. You know, your wife stays in the, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> with the mother <laughs> until 12 you make a call to your mother you know my husband is a mother's boy he's a mama's boy he can't do anything without consulting the mother they are our mothers and we love them and we will call them the only problem I can say never allow as a man don't allow your mom to control your marriage don't allow that but talking to your mother and keeping the communication for those who's, you know, I know some who are listening. Your mom died and you miss her a lot. Right now she's alive. Talk to her. There is a time you'll never hear her voice. Hello. 
that voice will never be there. When your mom is alive and your father is alive, make sure you talk to them. I call my dad every time. How are you doing? Uh, uh, my dad, uh, is here, you want anything? No, I just wanted to check on you. I call my mom, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I, I was just saying hi. That communication is very important because one day you will call that number and it will be mteja wanambari uliopiga. She would have go, she will go to heaven. And some men here, you can tell me, your, your mom is in heaven. Some of you here, your mother left, right? Some of us, we miss. My wife, her mom passed on. And if there is something she usually tells me, I miss my mom. I miss my mom. You know? If my mom was alive, we would be going all the way from Nakuru to go say hi to her. You know? I go to her, I, we go to the village with her and she tells me, my mom used to cook here. You see right here? That's where she used to cook. My mom used to have a cow. The cow was, then when we go behind the house, she is lying there, gone and never to wake up. So when they are alive, when your parents are alive, take care of them. Talk to them. Don't, you know, you have a lot of time on Facebook and social media. Have time for your parent. Have time. Create time. Oh, mom, I'm busy. I'll call you back. No, create time for them. Go visit your mom. Go visit your dad. If he, he's, there, is, there is a time you'll never see his face again. If there is a time for, to spend with your parents is now. I'm not saying you'll be going home every, every week. But so many people miss their mom and they miss their dad. If they are alive, spend time. You know, life, do you know, let me say something important before I read the word of God right here. I am a firm believer. There is something I normally teach. And this is what I say. Why do you think God created us? Why did God create me and you? As you are watching, why did God create you? And I normally ask this question whenever I go to conferences and to youth seminars. Why do you think God created you? And they lift up their hands. I remember one day I was preaching in Eldoret and Zablon, you know Zablon the youth leader in this church was in that meeting and I asked that question, why do you think God created, that was in 2011 I was preaching in Eldoret and I asked them, why do you think God created you and they, we were in one of, uh, one of the primary schools, we were seated in the, on the grass and they lifted up their hands and I started getting the answers, you know why do you think God created you one said, you know, God created me to populate the, the earth. You know, and he was right. You know, I was created to populate the, the earth. And the, one, the other one said, God wanted somebody who he can send, somebody who, he can worship, who can worship him. So I'm always ready to be sent by God. So they believe the reason why God created them is to send them. For your information, God has millions of angels he can send. He doesn't, by the way, you don't fly. Angels fly. So your speed is slower than the angels. He doesn't need to send you. He can send Gabriel. By the time you are reaching where he has sent you, already angels will be there. So God did not create you so that he may send you. God did not create you so that you may populate the earth. No. Another one said, you know, and I asked even the other question, why would you like to have children? I asked those two questions. Everywhere I go, I ask those two. Ah, you know, I want to have children so that I may leave my inheritance. You know, I want to give them an inheritance. When I have money, I have to have somebody who I can leave the inheritance to. Why, do, why would you like to become a parent? And I'm asking you, all of you here, why would you like to become a father? Why would you like to become a mom? So many people have different. I want children who look like me. You know, those were the answers I was getting. I want human beings who look like me. I want children that can inherit my property. I want this, I want this. All those answers were right, but they were not correct. They were they correct or they were right? They were correct, but they were not right. Yeah? Why would I like to have children? Why did God create us? 
God did not create us to send us. I did not get children so that I may have three boys I can send to the shop. I have legs, I can go. By the way, you send your child, they go, you know, the way they count. You tell them, two bread, one kilo of sugar, and one sweet. They go counting. Two bread, one kilo of sugar, one sweet. Okay? As, or maybe, you know, they go counting. By the time they go to the shop, it is the other way around. Two sweet, you know, and the other things have done what? <laughs> so is, I better go to the shop myself. I don't need to send them. The reason why God created you, and listen to this because he's very careful, is that he may share life with you. That's the main reason for creation. He may share life with you. The reason why you have children is not that you may discipline them. You may be a commander-in-chief in the family. The reason you become a father is that you may share life with your children. Sharing life. Every little moment. God wanted fellowship. God wanted fellowship. Somebody he may share life with. Somebody he may fellowship with. That is why the Bible says at a particular time in the day, God would come and visit Adam. Not to ask for offerings. Listen, God is not after your money. You know people think, you know God wants my money, wants my tithe. All those things he has done them to create obedience so that you may have time. He may have fellowship with you. By the way, for your information, the money you have belongs to him. The gold and silver belongs to him. It's not your money he needs. God, number one, wants fellowship. He wants to share life with you. When you have children, the reason you get children is that you may share life with them. You may share life. The little moments. Somebody may be, may be asking, what do you mean by sharing life? I purposely decided every morning, even though I wake up to pray and everything, I'll, because my schedule is very tight. The only time I'm available is Saturday mornings. That's when I'm available for my family. So I decided I will be the first thing my children will see when they wake up. And I will be the last thing they will see when they are sleeping. So I make sure when they are going to bed, I participate. I'm there. Hey, let's pray together. Can we, our Father who art in heaven, can you put your sleeping bag? I'm right there. In the morning when they wake up, hey, can you get up? I wake them up. Hey, it's time to take shower. Hey, hey, hey. And sometimes I'm there when they are ready to, they, are, they have showered themselves. I'm putting, you know, mafuta. Mafuta in English, I don't know what it is. Eh? I'm putting jelly on them. And, and we eat breakfast together and I take them to school. Those moments they will remember and they will cherish them for the rest of their lives. Even if I pay their school fees, they will never remember. Even if I buy them a toy, they will never remember. The simple small moments of sharing life with them Hide and seek games. We'd, tonight I know my daughter is waiting for me. Yeah? Yes, yesterday was my, my wife. Yesterday I was so tired I told my wife, today you are the one playing hide and seek. Today I know I'm, I'm, I will be the one. I'm the one taking over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up to twenty. I, and then you can see their legs. You know they are hiding and you can see their legs and you're like, where are you? Where are you? You know, it looks foolish, but that is what life is. Life is not big TVs and big phones. Life is about sharing those wonderful moments with your family. And can I tell you something? When you are on your, when you are on your deathbed, when you are old and you are about to leave this world, you will not remember your car. You will not remember the house you build. Every person who is sick, have you listened to what they normally say? Can you call for me, my children? Can you call for me, my family? You don't say, can you bring that car? Was it serviced? Have people paid rent? You don't remember those things. You remember what? Your family. That is why do not neglect your family. I'm talking to men now. Do not neglect your children because on your deathbed, it is children you remember. It is family you remember. It is not church members as a pastor who remember. Will never, when I'm old there, hopefully Jesus will return before I get old. But when you are old and you will not be like, 
Are they, did the ashes come? No, you don't even remember the ashes. It is about your children. It is about your family. At the end of the day, it's your family. Take care of your family. Take care of your wife. Make sure your marriage is tight. Make sure you have a relationship with your children. Some of these people, you think they are very important buddies. You are watching football with them. Every now and then, you are in a club watching football. Spending time drinking with, with some people you feel are very important. Once you don't have money, that is when you'll know they are not important. They will live your life. But your son, your wife will stick with you. If I were you, I will spend more time with my kids and with my family. Because when you spend life with people, when you spend moments, beautiful moments. You see like right now, the way you are here, I'm not paying, I'm not paying you anything. But just being in the house of God, you are fellowshipping with God. You are spending time with him. That was the purpose of creation. Jesus dying. You think God is scared of sin? No, he wanted to reconcile us to him. The message of the cross is not the message of sin. It is the message of reconciliation. My children, you walked away from me. Come back. It is a message of fellowship. That is why if you are preaching a lot, stop scaring us a lot with how God is going to finish us because of sin, 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 sin. It's okay to talk about sin, but it is very important to talk about relate, relating with God, training people on the best way to relate with God. Fellowship is very important because what God is seeking, even in a marriage, now I'm asking a question, I'm married, do you think, what, what do I need in that marriage? Do you know there are some young men right now, they want to get married because of sex. Even they are, you know, the ones that are born again, they are in the church. They are saying, let me tell you, the mom, that, the day I will marry, I will have sex from morning to evening. You know, they have these fantasies. Listen, marriage is not about sex. By the way, sex is a very small place in marriage. It's a very small place in marriage. And this is why, listen, if you are sick, will you have sex? If your wife has, had, has, has given birth, will you have sex? So if sex took you there, you will get out to look for it. Marriage is not about sex. Marriage is not about paying bills. Marriage is about sharing life with each other. Love. That is the interpretation of love. Sharing life with each other. So I need to create time for my wife. But if you go there, mark timing. You know one day, we, we went to a certain wedding and the moment we finished the wedding, the lady called me. You know, they had gone to honeymoon, so the lady called me and I'm like, why is this? It is in Nairobi. She, she, we, we, we were from her wedding. You know, I'm expecting, no, I don't expect her call. So I thought she's calling maybe to say thank you. She told me, I'm not now in the hotel. That man, can you talk to him? That man is a mad man. <laughs> and I'm like, what has he done? You know, I don't have to explain to you. The man was, you know, getting ready and shouting like a dying bull. You know, <laughs> you know the lady got so scared. You know, she, she got so scared, she decided I'm not going to stay in the hotel. And do you know, they never stayed in honeymoon. She never went back to the hotel. I tried to talk. The man was telling me, listen, I have been fasting, waiting on God. <laughs> I have been living a holy life. I, this is my, it is a legal ground for me now. A legal ground to scare your wife. <laughs> you know, that is a mentality of some men. You know, that, that should not be your mentality. Your mentality should be, I'm getting married not for sex. Because, listen, there will be a time you'll be old and sex will not even be there. Will you still continue in that marriage? Yeah. Men get sick, they can't perform. Ladies get sick, they can't perform. So will you walk away from that marriage? Life is not about that. I remember one day, a lady marrying a man who was in wheelchair, paralyzed from here. And they did a wedding. And the lady was not paralyzed. People I know. 
And I was wondering, where now are they going now? The man is paralyzed from here. But as the lady was talking, you could hear her saying, I'm not after those things people go after. I just love him and I want to share life with him. I want to be with him. She didn't say share life. I want to be with him. Would you marry somebody <laughs> who is disabled? Would you? Would you marry somebody you know they are not, you know, because the mentality of people, life is all about sex. Sex has been sold all over, in billboards, on television, on movies. And so when we think, even now women have become worse. Simple ladies who are supposed to go there to be a wife, they have become notorious. They are the ones that demand it, even before marriage. We are raising a culture, a sex culture. Everything is about sex. Now that is why you see, and allow me to speak this way because all of you are grown up. That's why you are seeing adverts on all the posts. The posts, you know, electricity posts. Adverts for men. Would you like one to want a, a big this? Call this number. We will make sure because the world has become a place where now you find men are even scared to get married. I had a man coming to me in, uh, in Nairobi, depressed. He, has, he was watching pornography. He, even when he came into my office, you could tell he's going into total depression. He couldn't be able to, he's like a drunkard man, the way he was looking at me. And then I asked him, what is your problem? He told me, you know, me, I think I can't satisfy a woman. Are you married? No. Why do you think you can't satisfy you, a woman? Uh, you know, when I watch those movies, pornographic, and I see those men, men, the way they are, I'm not like them, looking at me like this. You know, I, I, I don't know what, can, pastor, can you pray for me so that I can be like them? I need special prayers. What can you, even whatever you can do to me so that I can have, you understand what I'm talking about? And allow me to speak these things. They are happening. And I looked at this man, he's totally, he's not living in the world I live in. He's in another world. Totally depressed. And he can't marry because he saw these actors looking like, I don't want to use bad names. And then he's like, I'm not like that. You know, uh, uh, you know I don't know what I'm going to do when I marry. <laughs> I don't know where he went. <laughs> I tried to pray for him. I tried to counsel him. I, uh, by the time I was leaving Nairobi, he was halfway there. And, uh, and he was still telling me, even when we pray, things are still the same down there. You know, what kind of prayers am I going to pray? Oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus. You know, there are some, some prayers. Stop giving us troubles. Accept the way God created you. Jijaze. Unajua chura, chura kuna vile huwe inafuranga. Ukienda kuiguza unona imefura. Inatisha, unona mpaka kama ni leopard inaondoka. Jijaza kwa maisha, unaweza kuwa una pesa, lakini unafura. Wanaume wamenyamaza sana, halo. Unaonanga mwanaume anaona hizo vitu zimeandiko kwa, kwa, kwa barabara na angalia namba ya kwanza 0720, anapita. Mana utaki huonekana ndiyo namba unachukua. 0720 unapita. Unarudi. 027 unapita. Unaiweka kwa akiri. Unapita mara ya tatu huwa. 988. Harafu unaenda unanika 07. Unapigia huyo mutu. Huyo mutu. Sikiriza hakuna kitu watakufanyia. Let me be honest with you. These are just cons. You know? They are just going to give you mitishamba. <laughs> you go there, you use money, and you remain the same. So you better accept. And this pressure has come from women who are ladies, not all women, some ladies who are immoral. They try show men without being this way. You can't. Listen, the number of immoral women is a very small number. A very small number. Majority of women are good women. And they don't even care about those things. I've encouraged a young man who is almost committing suicide. <laughs> because of some of these things. Listen, be strong. Hallelujah. Jijaze. Ah, kwani utapere kwa wapi? 
Yeah, you know, wacha niache na hiyo maneno. Do you know even time has <laughs> I, have, I think God wanted me to do counseling. These are called candid talks. Some women, you have a problem with your chest. Accept your chest. Even you try to put clothes there to look big. You don't, you don't have to do those things. You don't have to buy some things here that will make you look big here behind. You don't need to do those things. You don't need them. Even if you are flat behind there, it is your flatness. It is your flatness. Walk with it. You will find one who likes those who are flat. And he will marry you. You don't have to buy those things and you walk in a certain way so that they, we can see you are big there. No. And then you have to stand a certain way uh, to see you, you, your chest. No, 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 no. Listen, God will never give you everything. By the way, you, know, you may get a good face and very small legs. That is how life is. Haven't you seen a very beautiful girl, the face? She appears, you're like, wow. Then look at her leg. It is like a stick. Yeah, you know, it's like a stick. But the face, my goodness. This is a marketing face. You know, there are people who have a marketing face. Your face has value. Your face can earn you millions. But your legs can earn you nothing. Then you find another woman that looks like beating people. You know, she looks like she's a, a soldier somewhere, you know. She was damaged by mosquitoes. But look at her figure. My goodness. Our glass figure. And this thing, you know, imeshiba, imeshiba. <laughs> it is life. There are some who are not happy the way I'm talking. But that is the truth. Life goes like that. Another one has no chests, but has good legs. Another one has good chest, but here, flat. That is how life is. Accept it. Stop trying to become something you are not. Hey, hallelujah. Right now, let me give you the last example and I'm done. Right now, the popular thing is men having a beard. It is a popular thing. You know, they are growing their beard. Me, I have about 18 beards. I can count them. I can count. And when one falls, it is a great loss for me. I usually wake up and when I see it, <laughs> or <laughs> I look at my pillow, two hours lying there, I know I have lost. I have lost two important hairs from my, my cheek. Almost I, I, I feel like crying. You know, I have lost two beards, if there is such a word in English. You know, I have tried everything. You know, even these ones, the last time I shaved these when I was in high school, and I didn't shave, I touched a little. They are more than 20 years, these ones. What you are seeing here, yeah. Now I see prophets. You know, the prophets of God in this country. <laughs> you know, right now to be a prophet in Kenya, you have to have what? You, know, you pass in the midst of the people you just do your beer like this. I'm telling you they will follow you in the, in the men. Look at me. You know, even some people come when I'm praying for them, those who are older than me. They call me their baby. You know, because I don't have a beard. I look like a baby to them. You know, you we we mwanawa kwa nedero na we mwanai. You know, we naona ukiwa mtoto, lakini wacha tu ni kuambie maana we ni pastor. What if I had a beard that was up to this size? You know, when you are coming near, I just do like this with a beard. I'm telling you, you fall down before even you come near me. Look at the prophets in this country. They have big beards. Me, I know I'm a prophet. A prophet without what? Even recently I thought, why can't I buy? The <laughs> you know, there, there, there is one to stick. You stick it there. And then there is another chemical you put. Even I told my wife, you know something, dear, I am thinking of buying the chemical I put, you know, all over here, I bring like this, and then I put here, and then I see how it will grow, and then I shave it a little bit like that, and then I release it all over. You know when you have the mask and the beards, your face becomes bigger. You know, even when you're passing, there is honor. Now my face is very small, and then when you don't have a beard, people mistake you for a lady, and especially when you're brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh goodness. Uh, am I talking too much? You know today we are having a candid talk. You drop the window of the car, you hear the watchman say, Madam. You're like, I'm not madam. What are you talking? <laughs> but when I had a, if I had a beard, yes, they would say, oh, thank you, sir. Welcome. Listen, you'll never be given everything. That is why you see even some of the rich people have very bad faces. They look ugly, but they have a lot of money. And then some of these looking good men, they have nothing in the pocket. Life goes like that. You better accept that is what. Ooh, have you seen a rich man? He has only two kids. And the wife cannot bear any more children. The poor man in the slums has eight. <laughs> it is life. Now, maybe I don't know how many people who can support me to grow a beard artificially. There is a fertilizer they are selling. It is in every beauty shop in Nakuru. Even if you want it. Even if you want your hair to come up to here. You just apply. You, they go draw where you want your hairline to be. They put the cream. It's a fertilizer. It causes the hair flock. What do you call them? Hair follicles. They produce hair. Anyway, a candid talk. Accept the way you are. Some of you, that stomach will never go. It is there to stay and you better accept it. Some of you, your metabolism, you will add weight. Look at this young man. Even if he eats, I have seen him eating. He never grows. Look at this one. They never grow. They, they remain the same. For me, I just eat two toasts. I add a kilo by evening. It is life. You know, I look at them. We go somewhere. We are invited to eat. I just put a few spoons. These guys... I'm telling you, they eat until they bring loss in that family. You know? <laughs> but they never grow. They are the same way. So accept your body. It is your body. It is the way your body was created. You know? You know those competitions of food? Do you see fat people eating? It is usually these slim people. They go to those competitions. <laughs> you know? <laughs> they eat until the stomach is... And you see, you see them eating. And tomorrow, flat. You go try it. You're going to die. For me, I can't do those competitions. I will die. So what I'm trying to say to all of us is accept who you are. Accept your body shape. If your ears are big, they are yours. Don't, nobody will come higher them. They belong to you. Stay with them and accept them. If you are not given a very beautiful face, the purpose of the face is to carry your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. As long as they are carrying your, the, your face is carrying your eyes and your nose and your mo mouth, move forward. Don't worry. Don't worry about life. And I'm telling you, life does not reward somebody by the way they look. Life rewards somebody by diligence. I repeat, diligence shall reward you. Can you lift up your hands and tell God, I will not ask you why did you create me the way I am. No. No. I love you. I love you, God. And the moment I become secure within me, and I accept the way, God, you created me, I accept the way, Lord, you put me together. You will bless me. And that will be my breakthrough. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every person who was following and watching, I pray that we will accept what you gave us. We will not allow low self-esteem discouragement, hatred, the comments of people to discourage us. We will not allow ourselves to live in depression because of what people think and say concerning us. We believe we are fearfully and wonderfully made and we are built in your own image. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I had about eight verses I was supposed to read, but the Lord allowed us to go that way. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? From today, accept the way you, you are. If God gives you a big nose, is that you may breathe well. Just accept it. Some of you ladies have very big feet. You know? Number 10. It's okay. It's okay. Just walk in the house. You know, you make sure those, those feet carry the baby nicely. You know, when you step.
step on the ground, there is enough friction to carry your baby. So accept your feet. Some of you are tall. It is, 